And once again, we're gonna do a quick overview of Centrin's polypropylene material, an SLS powder bed fusion material for use on the Lisa and Nils SLS 3D printers. So polypropylene is really a wonder material of its own. It's got incredible mechanical properties that allow it to be used in a lot of different applications. It's dedicated, in this case, for prototyping of polypropylene parts as well as functional parts if you need low volume, which can really take advantage of the extreme chemical resistance. I mean, polypropylene is used in all kinds of applications, in automotive and other stuff, and we'll get into that in just a second. Uh, but the material is also weldable, meaning you can uh, basically melt multiple parts together, and uh, of course it's very ductile, meaning it can stretch like crazy. This is one of those materials that's highly sought after in the additive market, but it's a lot more difficult in other processes like FDM extrusion. So bringing it into SLS opens a whole new range of possibilities. Uh, really, this stuff is used all over the place. Most commonly, water bottles and the caps for just about everything, from your shampoo bottle to uh, honey bottles or electronics cases. And uh, here's a few examples. We've got uh, the automotive industry. You'll see reservoirs, piping, housings, and laboratories. You'll see custom chemical tools like holders or vessels or brackets, uh, living hinges, cases, capsules, and more. Living hinges in particular because this stuff can bend back and forth and back and forth millions of times before ever breaking down. What kind of machine do you need to print this filament? Uh, most of the Lisa's, they don't list the original Lisa, but the Lisa Pro, the Lisa X, and the Nils can all do it. You don't need nitrogen, uh, and the refresh ratio is 50%. So you basically take all the old powder, you pull your parts out, you've got the leftover powder, and you add 50% new powder and then sift it, and then you can reuse all that powder over again in the next build. By the way, if you're enjoying this content, hit that like and subscribe and or leave a comment down below and let us know what other information or prints or projects you'd like to see. Uh, you guys really drive our content, so let me know in the comments below. All right, let's get into some basic polypropylene material specifications. Really cool material, a lot of things it can do. If you know plastics, there's a good chance you know polypropylene. So uh, here's a few advantages. Extreme chemical resistance. Uh, very low density, which enables it to be buoyant and float. Uh, it doesn't absorb water, um, like that's a great feature. It's very recyclable and it's suitable for pneumatic parts. And of course you can weld it to other polypropylene parts, which is really nice because in a lot of plastics you gotta resort to some sort of adhesive or glue versus polypropylene, you can literally weld it. Uh, as Pretty cool feature. The softening point's around 119 Celsius with a melting point of 135, and the heat deflection's more around the 85 Celsius temperature uh, at 0.45 megapascals. And it's got a tensile modulus of 820 megapascals, a tensile strength of 19.3 MPa, a flexural strength of 25.6 MPa, and an impact strength in the Charpy unnotched method of 30 kilojoules per meter squared with an elongation at break of about 44%. By the way, all this data and more data is available in the technical data sheets. So instead of going into it here, just go to visionminer.com slash for the links to those and get all the juicy details. So from there, let's check out some example parts. Uh, this is a particularly cool one in that it is a pump for it's some sort of fluid pump, right? And this whole internal thing spins inside of here Need a more powerful motor than my hand, but you get the idea. Um, it's a housing, and it, you know whatever you're putting through this material, uh, chemicals, uh, hydrocarbons, things of that nature. Polypropylene is resistant to a lot of stuff, so no matter what your application, uh, pumps and pump housings is definitely something to look into. You've got you know hoses and tubing and things of that nature. Uh, air valves, uh, you got this thing, this is a Venturi nozzle, a Venturi valve, uh, and you can see this is just a cool print with the cutout inside. Actually, another good one would be um, uh, reactors, custom reactors, chemical reactors. Now, this is an interesting one that we sort of learned about in our peak and Ultim days, uh, where in the early days of that, where we saw universities taking some sort of little jig structure and putting different chemicals in so that they all drop down and reacted at the right time in the right proportions. So that could be an application for this. Uh, there's a lot of different things you could do. Let me actually pull up some pictures and get a little bit, uh, some more examples. Um, you've got air boxes and air filters. Again, this is great for automotive because it's resistant to all those chemicals. So if you want to, it's got, it's got a pretty good um, 
uh, thermal resistance too. So if you're gonna put it as an air box, air filter, something like that inside the vehicle or an engine bay, it can work really well there. Uh, you've also got pumps, pump housings, air valves, connectors. Um, you could use it for nozzles or, or models and things like that. Basically anything you'd wanna use polypropylene for. I mean, uh, one big one would be little capsules or little jars that have screwable lids or something like that uh, for anything you need to put in there. It's just a cool material. It's also living hinges. If you wanna make parts like hinges, they're just gonna be able to be moved thousands if not millions of times, it's a really cool material for that because it's very flexible but still very robust. Anyway, more stuff to come. Let us know in the comments down below what you would like to print on these machines in these materials. And if you've got an actual business case, we can actually get you an ROI breakdown going over the electrical costs to the powder costs to the actual time to print and the volume that you can print to see if going to scale in one of these machines actually makes sense. And if you just like this content, hit that subscribe, see more as it comes out. We do a lot of stuff in high temperature FDM printing like Peak and Ultim, 3D scanners, 3D scanning, and of course the full lineup of SLS machines and a lot more cool stuff coming. So stay tuned. Subscribe subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Have a positive rest of your day and I will see you on the next one.